The Task at Hand Prepare a personal first aid kit to take with you on a hike. The Personal First Aid Kit Six adhesive bandages Two sterile 3x3 three three inch gauze pads A small roll of adhesive medical tape A 3x6 inch piece of moleskin A small bottle of alcohol-based hand sanitizing gel or a small bottle of liquid soap a small tube of triple antibiotic ointment, a pair of scissors, preferably small, disposable non-latex gloves, I'd suggest two pairs, and in a pinch you could just use disposable latex gloves, a CPR breathing barrier or mouth barrier that is disposable, a pen or pencil, I'd suggest a pen more, and finally, a piece of paper, preferably an index card. Most of these items you should be able to get at your local grocery store or pharmacy. This is the personal first aid kit. First, you have six adhesive bandages followed by two 3x3 three three sterile gauze pads, then a roll of adhesive medical tape. Next is a piece of moleskin, and yes, those are two different kinds, and I will show you the difference. Okay, here are the two different kinds of moleskin. This one is actual moleskin. Here's the thickness. Now this one is actually technically, technically called mole foam, and here's the reason why. See, it's actually noticeably thicker, provides more padding. So if you were to compare them two side by side, the mole skin in my right hand is thinner than the mole foam in my left hand. a small bottle of an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Now, the hand sanitizer should really be in its own bag, uh, just in case it ever leaks. So I would suggest that you put it inside a pint-sized Ziploc bag, or plastic bag of some kind, like so. Zip that, press the air out, and just like that a tube of antibiotic ointment. Now to keep your antibiotic ointment together with your smaller bandages, there's actually a pretty easy way to do this. First you put them on top with the ointment like this, and then you get a rubber band. And simply put it over the whole thing just like this, twist it around one more time, and it should stay, if there's still a lot of play, then quite simply maybe do one more turn. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose either, you just have to play with it. But, when you're done, it should basically be something like this. Where the, band, the uh, ba small bandages and the antibiotic ointment tube are together, just like this one unit like that. And that's how you keep it together. Followed by a pair of scissors. That particular kind is a foldable, and I'll show you how it works. This was the pair of folding scissors I showed you. Uh, you don't have to absolutely get these, but you do need a small pair of scissors. Anywho, here's how this particular one unfolds. Just push like so. Push those down, and then you're ready to snip, snip, snip. Here's how to fold it back up. Next are 
two pairs of disposable gloves. Now, for the disposable gloves, I would just put it inside another pint size Ziploc bag uh, just to keep it as clean as humanly possible since this is what would be coming in contact with blood and other uh, bodily fluids of your patient. Oh, hold on. Tuck that in. And again, uh, two pairs are better. Make sure to squeeze all the air out. Then cinch it in. There you go. That is a CPR mouth barrier, and I will unpack it and show you what it looks like. So, here's the uh, mouth barrier, and I'll show you what it looks like. Quite literally, it has an instruction manual. And I want to be careful here because I don't want to actually touch it, but because it needs to be kept as clean as absolutely possible. But this should give you an idea. Um, that's where your mouth would go in, is right there. Is right there. And the tube, that tube, hold on, that tube right there is what going down somebody's throat. Okay. And your mouth would go over this part and they otherwise provide a list of instructions for you. And then of course uh, this is disposable so you use it once and then you throw it away by another one. And then a piece of paper, in this case an index card, and a pen. You want to have a pen that has a top off that you can take off like so. And then obviously you can put the cover for it on the back and then obviously do that backwards. You do not, I repeat, you do not want this kind of pen where you press the top and then the point comes through. You don't want to do that because what if an object presses down on that? Then you have a point and may poke a hole in your bag. So get this type of pen. Finally, everything should fit inside a quart size Ziploc bag. Obviously the contents of the personal first aid kit should fit inside one quart size Ziploc bag, as you can see. It should all be pretty compact. And here's the really important part. Everybody should have their own personal first aid kit. And also, if you know somebody gets injured, remember, use their supplies first, then use your own if they're lacking in supplies. Thank you for watching. I hope this was beneficial and added to your knowledge base. Feel free to download this video and burn it to DVD. Hold screenings with your group to aid in training. Remember this content and apply it. Remember, knowledge without action is simply intriguing trivia. If you decide to mirror this video, all I ask is for you to credit me as the original author. No comments from trolls or fakes, please. I'm simply here to help people. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd appreciate it if you could like, favorite, share, and or comment on this video. Thank you very much.